proximal convoluted tubule, once the fluid, the filtrate leaves the Bowman's capsule and enters the proximal convoluted tubule, 60 to 70% of the good stuff gets reabsorbed. And that's why I always keep saying reabsorption is the main function of the proximal convoluted tubule. What happens is sodium ions, potassium ions, bicarbonate, all these wonderful ions are actively transported out of this fluid back into the bloodstream. And then, of course, water follows the ions by osmosis. Anything that's um, lipid soluble, of course, can just, like for instance, if you had fatty acids in here, they can just slide right through. Up to 70% of the water, up to 70% of the sodium chloride, up to 90% of the bicarbonate, and hopefully almost all of the really good stuff gets reabsorbed. That's what's going on. So that stuff gets sucked out of the tubule, put back into the bloodstream. You can do this by a number of different ways. Uh, we talked about, up here we talked about active transport. Diffusion is passive, co-transport and counter-transport. Here's sodium, for instance. Sodium, uh, this is where the, this is the tubular fluid. <coughs> so this is inside the proximal convoluted tubule. These are the cells that form the wall of the, of the proximal convoluted tubule. Remember they, we talked about having microvilli. And then this would be like the peritubular or capillary over here. And so sodium can diffuse in, diffuse in just with sodium channels. We have a lot of sodium here and not much sodium here. It's diffuse in. You can co-transport it with glucose, which happens a lot. And then, of course, the glucose goes in. And then you can counter-transport it for something else. Most commonly, hydrogen ions. You can swap it. That's counter-transport. And then the sodium goes across on the other side of the cell and gets swapped for potassium. And so what ends up happening is sodium and glucose get into the bloodstream. Whoops, hydrogen and potassium come out. And your, and your kidneys are set up to save sodium, pee out potassium. Now, we're in the proximal convoluted, convoluted tubule. All of this happens automatically. This is not influenced by these hormones. Aldosterone and ADH are only, they only affect the distal convoluted tubule and the collective tubules. So this is going to happen automatically. Sodium is saved, potassium is peated. Now, water reabsorption, of course, water, movement of water is going to be by osmosis. And so if you're reabsorbing sodium, water is going to fall. <laughs> now, a little bit of secretion can happen in the proximal convoluted tubule, but that's not the major thing. Um, here's where creatinine can be secreted in, certain drugs and toxins, certain ions that your body doesn't need, hydrogen ions, if you have excess hydrogen ions, that means your pH is low in you. And so you can get a little bit of secretion of this stuff in there, but that's not the major job of the PCT. You can get rid of the hydrogen by swapping it basically for sodium. The descending limb of the loop of Henle. Remember that the descending limb is permeable to water. The ascending is permeable to sodium and chloride. So this would be the ascending limb. So we're talking about over here on this side. Again, inside the loop of Henle, there's a capillary over here somewhere. Here is sodium, potassium, and chloride. They come in. The sodium chloride go out. Then the potassium comes back around. And so basically, again, the kidneys are, are, are set up to save sodium and pee out potassium. So this transporter here binds two chlorides. This is a transport protein. Two chlorides, a potassium and a sodium. The chloride and the, and the potassium are pumped out by this transporter. This transporter swaps the potassium and the sodium. Sodium diffuses, excuse me, potassium diffuses back in the tube. So the bottom line is the ascending limb is basically pumping sodium and chloride ions out into this peritubular fluid. And so we already talked about a little, bit, a little bit about the other day, this medullary concentration gradient. As you move from the broad end of the, of the pyramids of the medulla down toward the center of the kidney, down toward the papilla, the fluid gets more concentrated. Not only the fluid inside the tubule, the descending limb and the ascending limb, but also the fluid outside the tubule. There are no 
water channels over here. Do you remember what the water channel is called? A special name? Aquaporin. Those are water channels. Just like we have sodium ion channels, potassium ion, all kinds of ion channels, we also can have water channels. Here you have lots and lots of water channels, lots and lots of aquaporins, but nothing else, no other kind of channels or palms or anything like that. Over here in this limb, you don't have any of those water channels, but you do have sodium chloride pumps. So the ascending limb pumps the sodium and chloride out here, and then as the fluid is moving through the descending limb, water is sucked out because of the sodium and chloride that's in this period. So what happens is, as you move down, if you measure the osmolarity, basically the osmolarity is just the amount of stuff, no matter what kind of stuff, but just the number of particles, it's going to increase, oops, sorry, 300 to 600 to 900. That's the osmolarity of the peritubular fluid, the fluid outside. Okay. Because sodium chloride is being sucked out. Now, as water comes down the other way, as water comes through the descending limb, it's going to be sucked out. And so not only does the peritubular fluid become more concentrated because of this, the actual tubular fluid becomes more concentrated as well. So as the fluid moves down, it's going to go from 600 to 900 to 1200. And then of course what happens is this fluid goes back up, it's going to become less concentrated because sodium chloride is being sucked out. So the tubular fluid starts out at about 300. As it goes down the descending limb, water is osmosed out, and so it becomes more concentrated, right? So this concentra concentrated fluid turns the corner, and as it goes up the ascending limb, the solutes are sucked out, and so it becomes more dilute. If this was all that was going on, then eventually what happens, the water would dilute out the sodium and chloride, right? Exactly. But what you have is you've got the peritubular capillaries. And they're sucking up the water and they're sucking up the chloride. Exactly. And so they don't they don't have time to, to even out. Because you constantly get everything's working, right? You've constantly got fluid coming down and up, and you've constantly got blood going around the other direction. So remember the peritubular capillaries. So here's the um, descending limb of the loop of Hanley. Water is coming out. If you didn't have this, the water would stay there. But what happens is the tubular fluid is moving in this direction. The blood is moving in this direction. And so as the blood comes down, it's going to pick up some of the sodium chloride. It's going to turn around, and then it's going to pick up some of this water. And so if all you had was the tubule, these things would balance each other out. But because you've got some sodium chloride leaving and some, some water leaving, you end up with a gradient, a concentration gradient. What you have is called the count, this process that I've been trying to explain, is called the countercurrent multiplication system. Countercurrent because you've got tubular fluid moving down and then moving back up again. At the same time, you've got blood going the other direction, moving down and going up again. So you have countercurrent and multiplication. The multiplication comes from the fact that as more and more sodium is pumped out, more and more water is going to get reabsorbed over here. That's the multiplication. As the fluid comes down, the particular fluid comes down, and as water is osmosed out, water is sucked out, then it gets more concentrated. And what happens is that means there's more sodium and chloride here. So that means there's going to be a ton of sodium and chloride pumped out. And then as the fluid moves up, since it's losing sodium chloride, it's getting more dilute, which means there's less sodium chloride pumped out here. The key thing to remember is that both the tubular fluid and the peritubular fluid are more dilute at the, at the raw part of the pyramid, raw part of the medulla, and more <coughs> concentrated at the tip. That's, that's the key thing to remember. <laughs> so, and, and the reason this works is because the descending limb is only permeable to water. The ascending limb is only permeable to sodium.
So, why is this important? Why is this process important? Well, most of the water and solutes are reabsorbed before the fluid reaches the distal convoluted tubule. And remember, all this stuff happens automatically. These hormones that we're talking about, they have no effect on any of this. This is all obligatory. It must occur. And what it does is it establishes, establishes, establishes this medullary concentration rate where the tips of the medullary, the tips of the pyramids are more concentrated, the fluid in there is more concentrated than the bases. And why that's important is because in the collecting duct, it permits water to be reabsorbed if ADH is secreted. So more concentrated here, less concentrated here. Now, remember we talked about the um, juxtamedullary nephrons that had the long loops of them? Depending on what the whole body needs. 
all of the rest of the stuff that we've been talking about up to this point happens automatically. 